Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're working on how to finish up the burrito method. So if you have watched the burrito method video, uh, there were, were a lot of questions on how I finish it up, how I do the hem. So we're going to go through a couple of options on how to do that. And if you want to go back and watch the burrito method, um, go ahead and click the link about above and go watch that and then come back and let's finish it up together. All right, so today I'm gonna to show you two different ways to finish this up. The first way would be just the easy, simple way, which would be to hem the bottom up. And the way to do that would be to grab both the outer and fold it in, fold it down, and then the liner and fold it in as well. Okay. Ooh, I almost grabbed the iron the wrong way. That would not have been fun and then you would place them right on top of each other. Fold it in a half an inch, seam allowance, place them right on top of each other, like so. As you can see, there they are. And hem it shut. That would be the easiest way. If you're trying to finish up like a tank uh, or something like that, that would be great um, to do on there at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and do all the way around and show you what that ends up looking like. You can hem this with a zigzag stitch, any kind of stretch stitch on your sewing machine, or a cover stitch, if you have a cover stitch. I also have some um, stretchy thread that I've used before for hemming. Um, it's not just like wooly nylon, it is actually stretchy thread. Um, I do have, we do have a video on here that kind of goes, like, shows how to work with that thread if you want to use it. Um, there's all kinds of different threads that are now out there that you can use a straight stitch with on your sewing machine. So it's great for hemming and stuff like that. So that works great as well. All right, I'm going to be using a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine, but you can use whatever you like to use for uh, hemming knits. You can use any kind of stretch stitch, or like I said, stretch thread, or your cover stitch, or whatever you want to use. And just like that, you have a top that has no seams anywhere. And it, if you make it a little bit longer, then it would be more of a top. This is just a crop because I am going to add something to it uh, to make it like a peplum or what you would do to make it a dress. I'm gonna show you that. Um, but another thing is that it's completely reversible. Ta-da! Super cute and super quick. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next option, which is to add something to it uh, to make it into a dress or like a you know peplum top or something like that. All right, so now I am going to turn this into a like peplum like top. Um, you can actually turn it into a dress, maxi length, knee length, whatever length you want. Um, what I did is I just did a basic measure my waist and I went twice the size. Uh, so I doubled it um, so I can gather it and just use a gather skirt um, for the for the bottom of it. Um, I like the way that a gather skirt looks. You can even find the width of your waist and make yourself a circle skirt or whatever you want to attach to it. But I'm going to go with the gather skirt. Um, if you don't want to kind of measure yourself and do it all the measurements yourself, you can use the sunny dress um, as an outline, as a guide on how to cut the skirt because it is the sunny dress has the, this is the basic sunny dress pattern. Um, so I, what I'm going to do though is I want to make this reversible um, because that's what's really cool about the burrito method that you can make it reversible like I showed you with the top. So once you have your bottom ready, you can either go ahead and grab both of those layers, the liner and the outer, and put them together and sew it on, um, which, will mean, which will mean that only one side will be uh, smooth and the other side will have a seam. If you're, if you're attaching the two together like, you know, the skirt on, you'll have a seam on the inside. So if you want it, if you don't, if, if you don't want it to be reversible, then you can just go ahead and attach it to just both of them and you'll have a seam on the inside. But if you don't want that and you want it to be reversible, then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna attach one to the outer, 
right sides together and one to the liner right sides together and then I'll be, end up hemming it like I did, like I showed earlier. So let's do that, that's what I'm going to do. I've got my skirt and it is divided in actual two, uh, yeah, two parts because I did double the width of my waist. So I did like the front twice and the back twice. But if you have a fabric that's really, really long, you can just cut it all one piece. Um, so since I can't do that, um, I just went ahead and cut it into two pieces. But I'm gonna go ahead and sew the sides together. And I'm gonna do that for both my uh, quote unquote lining piece and my quote unquote outer piece because I'm gonna make two, basically two skirts uh, to attach it so that it is uh, fully reversible. So I'm going to sew those sides. All right, so like I said, if you are only going to be doing one panel, if you're not gonna be doing reversible, then you would only have one of these, whatever is your outer. Um, but since I want to make this completely reversible, I've got the two panels. So I've got that one and this one. And the reason why you see a back seam is because I didn't have enough fabric to just cut it on the full top. to actually cut three pieces instead of two pieces. But that's okay, that doesn't change anything. I'm going to mark my front, where the front is going to be, because I want to have the mark so when I gather it, it helps to gather it more evenly. I'm going to do that for both. And then I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to put in a gathering stitch to gather the skirt to the width of my bodice. And how I'm going to gather it is I'm just going to put a long basting stitch on it, like the longest straight stitch on my sewing machine, and then pull it together. But you can gather it however you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in and gather it the width and then we'll attach it, hem it, and be done. All right, so I'm also gonna mark the halves and quarters of my bodice, that way I can attach it correctly. So we're gonna go from the middle to the two ends, to the two sides, I mean the front and the back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and gather them the width. Now, if I am just doing one layer, I'm gonna grab both of them and put both of them together. But since I'm doing two layers, I'm going to attach them to the individual layer. So like if you can see here, I'm gathering to see this is my mark that I made. So that for to this side should be half of the gathers. So that should be the width of half the bodice. Right. And then I'm gonna pull the other way and gather the other side. Grab the right one. You usually want to pull the bobbin. That's kind of slides a little bit easier. There we go. So now they're both the same width. Even now those gathers. And then I'm going to attach it. Right sides together. So I'm going to attach it just to the one layer because I'm doing the double. I know I've said that like 10 times. You're all like, we get it. We get it. I know, I know. All right. If I say it again, will you be mad at me? Make sure you're only attaching it to the layer that you want to attach it to. If you want to attach to both layers, um, you can go ahead and do so, but you won't be reversible. Um, so that's whatever you want to do. Y'all know I usually sew both of them at the same time. And you can if you want to go ahead and pin both of them at the same time, but I am just gonna go ahead and go with one at a time this time, just to make sure that <laughs> I don't get, I don't catch any of the other one, or you know, it doesn't get too annoying or in my way. So I'm just gonna do it one layer at a time. So I'm gonna sew this, um, well, this was supposed to be my outer, so I'm going to keep calling it my outer. I'm going to sew my outer on first, and then I'll come back and attach the liner to the other side.
All right, my friends, if you attached it to both, you are done with your top. All you need to do is hem it or dress, whatever you may. But since we are going to hem both, to do both, see, you would have this on the inside. You would have a seam on the inside if you only did one. But we're doing both, so we're gonna turn it and we're gonna work on the other side. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna gather this bottom piece and now I'm gonna attach it just to my other piece, this right here, just to that. So you can just pull it outside and remember right sides together and then you're gonna attach it to that. Now I wanna make sure where I ended up with the one that has the backing. There we go, so that's the back. So this is gonna be my back. Because remember, I cut one on the fold and I want that to be my back. So let's see, back, sides. Which ones are my sides? These, this is my side and my side and this is my back, okay. So I'm gonna attach that to the back of my bodice and go all the way around, fitting that in, right sides together. All right, let's go sew that on. All right, friends, we are done. Now we have our reversible, uh, well, this is a top. I made the top version, remove all the basting stitches. But if you made the dress version, you have a reversible dress um, or reversible top like I did. But the only thing left to do is to hem. So you, when you hem, you could either do one layer at a time. Um, sometimes I like to do that so they don't, like when, if, if one of them tends to shrink a little bit or something like that. This is why I usually do this with sim, like the same fabric so they don't shrink or act different. These are both double brush polys. Or, uh, so, or you can do it like we did the bodice earlier where we folded both half an inch right sides uh, wrong sides together and then we put them right sides together and we hemmed it or you can leave it raw Shh, I won't tell anyone if you just leave it raw with knit you can do that because they don't unravel but this is all I've got for you all today um, if you want to hem it um, you can we do have videos on different hemming techniques if you want to check that out please come and like share subscribe if you haven't so you never miss our, any of our tutorials please let me know if you have any more questions about anything to do with the burrito method I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!